Hey y'all, Coach Inner Fight here, coming out of the Book of Jubilees in Chapter 6. And in today's class, we're going to be talking about the Feast of the New Moons. Now, this probably is the first time you've ever heard about the so-called Feast of the New Moons. Because we're not really talking about every new moon, we're talking about four particular new moons in the year that we are supposed to remember. But they're really only found in the Book of Jubilees and only mentioned in the book of Enoch. So most people who haven't read the book of Jubilees or the book of Enoch have no idea about the so-called Feast of the Moon, or we're gonna see them called here, the Days of Remembrance. But in this video, we're gonna cover those chapters, starting in verse about 23, and we're gonna talk about the Feast of the New Moon or the Days of Remembrance, and Lord willing, we'll get into their relationship to the 364 days of the sacred calendar. So let's get into it. Let's come all the way down to verse 23, which says, And on the new moon of the first month, and on the new moon of the fourth month, and on the new moon of the seventh month, and on the new moon of the tenth month are the days of remembrance. Now, here is a diagram of the Enoch calendar that I've been working on showing all of the elements that we find in the Enoch calendar or the sacred calendar is still yet incomplete because it doesn't show these four days that's been mentioned here in the book of Jubilees, these four days of remembrance or these feasts of the moon. They would actually fall in this section right here at the first month, here at the fourth month, somewhere around here at the seventh month, and then here at the tenth month. And I'm still looking for a good way to depict them on this diagram. I don't want to use stars or anything, so I'm looking for some kind of symbol to use to mark them, showing that they fall at each one of the quarters here. These days of remembrance actually represent each one of the four seasons. Now, notice here that it calls them the days of remembrance. It was man's words that we saw back up in the abstract or the outline of the chapter that they were called the Feast of the New Moons. And that might be a good enough name to call it. But as we go along, keep in mind, what should we actually call this day? Now, I've gone through all of the Jewish holidays and there's no mention of the Feast of the Moons or the Days of Remembrance or these days at all. So the majority of the world has completely forgotten about these days. In fact, on this channel may be the very first time that you're hearing about these days of remembrance. So if it is true that we're the only people that remembers these days, then that might give us the right to actually name these days, these four days. What what would you call them? Would you call them the Feast of the New Moons or would you call them the Days of Remembrance or would you give them some other name? The idea that I came up with is actually Zikron. Coming from Strong's number 2146, which is the Hebrew word for remembrance. So maybe we could call this feast day Zikro or something like that. But let me know what you think. We're going to go on. It says, and the days of the seasons of the four divisions of the year. Now, this is what we're talking about here when we're talking about these new moon days or these days of remembrance. These four days make up the four seasonal days of the year. Those are the days that you see represented when you see an Enoch calendar, and it shows these extra days between each one of the seasons. Each of the four seasons start with one of these days of remembrance. And maybe this is what our father had in mind when he had us to remember these days, is that we're actually recognizing the exact date in which the seasons change according to the sacred calendar. Now, of course, man's seasons change by the solar calendar only, meaning that every time March the 20th comes around, man is going to declare it the first day of spring. But on the sacred calendar, we actually have to wait to the new moon to recognize the first day of spring. That's why a lot of farmers will get caught off guard. Because going by their secular calendar, they think that they have already entered spring, but because they're not waiting on the lunar calendar or the sacred calendar, they sometimes get hit with a late season frost that destroys their crops. This is another reason why it's important to remember the days of remembrance. But 
Verse 23 says, these are written and ordained as a testimony forever. And when it says that it's written, it's talking about they're written on the holy tablets, meaning that they ain't never going to go away. Like the Messiah says, the earth will be burnt up first before the days of remembrance go away. Now, verse 24 says, and Noah ordained them for himself as a feast for the generations forever, so that they have become thereby a memorial unto him. So here you have Noah, who wanting to remember these days have changed them into a feast. He made them a feast day for himself so he can remember these days. Now, this comes to my second question that I would like you guys to help out with in the comment section. And that is, how do we celebrate these feasts of the moon, these days of remembrance? What will we do on those days? Again, I've searched all of the internet, I've searched the Jewish community, and nobody seems to know about these days at all. And since we are among the first to actually recognize these days, maybe we can actually set the tradition on what we actually do on these days. Or are we going to feast on these days? Or are we going to do some other activity on these days? Now, looking back over here at this picture, we're recognizing that these feast days fall in each quarter of the year. So you have the first one that falls on the first day of the first month. Now, that is the day of cleansing that we hear about in the Old Testament when they cleansed the tabernacle and the priest and prepared for the feast of Passover. So that day involves a lot of sanctification and washing and cleaning different purification processes. And the new moon of the seventh month is the memorial of blowing of trumpets. They, those would actually fall on the same day. That day that we call Rosh Hashanah, that would actually fall on the exact day of remembrance in the seventh month. And then the day of remembrance in the 10th month falls toward the end of the Feast of Hanukkah. Now, I'll let you do the math on that, but Hanukkah starts on the 25th day of the ninth month and it lasts for eight days. And of course, the new moon of the 10th month will fall only a few days after the 25th. So that day of remembrance is actually part of the day of Hanukkah, which is the day of dedication. So we're taking all of those into account. We have the cleansing, the memorial of blowing of trumpets and Hanukkah making up the other three days of remembrance. So maybe we'll consider those as we try to figure out what we're supposed to do in the second day of remembrance, the one that falls in the fourth month. There are no other holy days or other events that fall around that day of remembrance. So it's kind of just sitting out there by itself. So tell me what you think we ought to do on that day. Verse 25 says, and on the new moon of the first month, he was bidden to make for himself an ark. And on that day, the earth became dry and he opened the ark and saw the earth. So here is some more ideas for what we're actually supposed to do or what's happening on those days. This particular one is talking about the new moon of the first month. And it's really interesting when you see or think about that Noah was actually given instruction to create the ark on the first month in the first day of the month. And the flood was completely over. The earth was dry and the ark was opened on the first day of the first month. So the first day of the first month represents both the beginning and the end of that so-called flood. Then when you look at verse 26, it's talking about the fourth and the tenth when it says, and on the new moon of the fourth month, the mouths of the depths of the abyss were closed. So this is talking about the end of the 40 days of rain that flooded the earth. It actually started on the middle of the second month, about the 17th day of the second month. And if you count 40 days, you're going to end up on about this new moon of the fourth month. So that was the rainy period between second Passover and the day of remembrance or the 40 days of the flood. And so we can remember that it was the 
second day of remembrance in which the flood water stopped. And on the new moon of the seventh month, all the mouths of the abyss of the earth was opened and the water began to descend again. So you have in the seventh month that the water has started draining as the mouths of the abyss of the earth are now swallowing this water that it spewed out about five months earlier. Then it goes on in verse 27 and says, and on the new moon of the 10th month, the tops of the mountains were seen and Noah was glad. So I believe all of these represent some type of spiritual pattern that our father has set for us down here. Something to do with his feast days and baptism. This ark, this third temple are somehow remembered in these days of remembrance. And I think that's what Noah is trying to tell us here. But I also believe that we need some more study to actually figure out this pattern. And we'll try to do so in a future class. So make sure you have your subscription button pushed so you can see when that class comes out. We're going to go on to verse 28, which says, And on this account, he ordained them for himself as feasts for a memorial forever. And thus they are ordained. So again, you have Noah here who is celebrating these days as a feast day. And that may be how we are to celebrate these days. Another day in which we share food and love with our friends and family members, including our spiritual brothers and sisters, as we remember these days of remembrance. And we have to remember that these are new moon days. The days talked about over there in Ezekiel chapter 46, when he's telling us that these are the days when the inner court are open. This occurs on all new moon days, like all Sabbath days. So these days of remembrance has like a double effect where the gates of the inner courts are open like it was a Sabbath day. But these are also the days of remembrance. So they're like feast days. This is why it's so important to remember these days, not only because we are told to and commanded to and instructed to, but these days have particular importance for us as individuals because these are days that we get spiritual renewals even more so than we do on the regular new moon days but anyway 29 says and they placed them on the heavenly tablets each had 13 weeks from one to another past their memorial from the first to the second from the second to the third and from the third to the fourth so here he's telling us that there are actually 13 exact weeks between these feast days or these days of remembrance. This is how the sacred calendar works. Verse 30 says, and all the days of the commandment will be two and 50 weeks of days, and these will make the entire year complete. Thus it is engraven and ordained on the heavenly tablets. So this is how the sacred calendar works. You actually have 52 weeks of days in the sacred calendar. This is how the sacred calendar has 364 days in it. Verse 31 says, and there is no neglecting the commandment for a single year from one year to the other. So this is how we keep track of the years is according to this 364 day reckoning. Now verse 32 says, and command thou the children of Israel that they observe the years according to this reckoning, 364 days, and these will constitute a complete year, and they will not disturb his time from his days and from his feasts, for everything will fall out in them according to their testimony, and they will not leave out any day nor disturb any feast. So it seems a bit like Moses has changed gears here, and now he's talking about the sacred calendar. But I believe if we pay close attention here, we see that he's actually making a connection between these days of remembrance and the 364 day calendar. As if to say, if we don't remember these days of remembrance, then we're actually going to forget the sacred calendar and our years will become disturbed and we'll lose track of the feast days. And this is why we're paying increasingly more attention to these days of remembrance as they approach because of their importance. 
And it seems as though these days of remembrance could be like a linchpin, the most important days to keep up with so that we could keep up with the rest of the calendar. The way I'm understanding what I'm reading here in chapter six, if you forget about these four particular days in the year, then you're actually going to get off track with the entire calendar. And you're going to forget the days of the sacred calendar. And we see evidence of this when we look at the Jewish community who, like we've said a few times, have completely forgotten about this day. And when you look at their years, like in the year 2021, you see that their feast days have become dislodged and they're actually celebrating all of the feast days in the wrong month in the year 2021 because they've lost track of the sacred calendar. The Pope and the Catholic forefathers decided not to include the Book of Jubilees in the canon. So most people aren't aware of these days of remembrance and they've actually been forgotten. So even the Jewish calendar can't be relied upon because it is not actually a sacred calendar because they actually forgot these days of remembrance and are not keeping track of the 364 day year. This is why you never hear the Jewish community talk about a 364 day year. It is because their calendar is actually not a sacred calendar. It is actually the creation of a gentleman named Hillel II and Constantine that actually changed their calendar into a man-made calendar that doesn't quite keep up with the feast days correctly. Well, you're actually seeing why over here, this is Moses telling us that this was gonna happen the moment that they got away from the 364 day reckoning. When they stopped counting the years 364 days, they actually got away from the sacred calendar and now they're celebrating their feast days in the wrong season. But anyway, let's go on. Verse 33 says, but if they do neglect and do not observe them according to his commandment, then they will disturb all of their seasons and their years will be dislodged from this order. And they will disturb the seasons and the years will be dislodged and they will neglect their ordinances. So here's where we're at now. We're neglecting the ordinances and our seasons and our years are dislodged. This is the result of not keeping up with these 364 days. This is the result of not keeping up with these days of remembrance. You see how important they are. They are actually what's keeping us on track with our correct seasons. These are the seasonal days. If we're not remembering these four days that divide the seasons, how do we know what season we're in? These are the seasonal days, these days of remembrance. Verse 34 says, and all the children of Israel will forget and will not find the paths of the years and will forget the new moons and the seasons and the Sabbaths, and it will go wrong as to all the order of the years. So again, this is Noah making a prediction, a prophecy of what will happen when we got away from these 364 days. And we could definitely see this plan out in current time. The children of Israel, for the most part, of course, there's a few of us who are trying to get back on track, but the other 99% of the children of Israel have lost the paths of the years. They don't know what year it is. Many of them just listen to the Jewish community and let them determine and let them tell us what year it is, even though it don't make logical sense. They say that the year is 5,781 or something like that, but we know that the Messiah is supposed to return. Jacob's trouble is supposed to be over. Babylon is supposed to fall. We're actually supposed to get the new covenant and the kingdom of heaven all that year 6,000. So according to the Jewish community, we still have over 200 years of Jacob's trouble. We still have 200 years before the return of the Messiah. We have still have 200 years before the new covenant comes down. And that doesn't make sense, especially when you understand that the Messiah came at exactly year 4,000 and there have been 2,000 years since that first advent, which tells you that we are much, much closer to the year 6,000 than we are to the year 5,700. This is what Moses was saying when he says that we'll lose the path of the years. We won't know what year it is because we've gotten away from the sacred calendar. 
and we've forgotten the new moons. You don't hear the Jewish community or anybody else, maybe except this channel, talking about having feast days or celebration days on the new moons. It's because we here at this channel are remembering the sacred calendar and following it. And as we learn this sacred calendar and start to follow it, we are remembering more and more of these days that our father wanted us to spend with him. New moon days, days of remembrance, Sabbath days and feast days are all days that he expects us to put down what we are doing and come and spend time with him. Well, it is only when we remember the correct reckoning of the year can we do so, because when we don't, those days become alien to us. We start to forget those days and not pay attention to those days at all. Verse 35 says, I know and from henceforth will declare it unto thee, and it is not for my own devising, for the book lies written before me, and on the heavenly tablets the division of the days is ordained lest they forget the feast of the covenant and walk according to the feast of the Gentiles after their error and after their ignorance. So the feast of the Gentiles, you recognize those as Christmas and Easter and Valentine's Day and the other pagan festivals that they celebrate throughout the year. But if I were to ask you, what is the feast of the covenant? Most of you wouldn't be able to get that correct on a multiple choice test. If you don't believe me, let's try it. What is the feast of the covenant? Is it Passover, Unleavened Bread, First Fruits, Pentecost, the Memorial of Blowing of Trumpets, Tabernacles, or Hanukkah? Which one is actually the Feast of the Covenant? Now, the reason why we don't know is because we have forgotten the correct reckoning of the days. We aren't following the sacred calendar, and that's why we don't know what this Feast of the Covenant is. But like we said, as we study this calendar, and as we get closer to what is actually telling us here, we'll find in this exact chapter, just a few verses earlier in verse 17, that Pentecost or the Feast of Weeks is the Feast of the Covenant, which falls in the middle of the third month. That is actually the time in which we renew the covenant. We just did a class on this not too long ago on how the Abrahamic covenant, the Noadic covenant, the Mosaic Covenant, even the New Covenant, all came down on the Feast of Weeks, which is the Feast of the Covenant. But anyway, you see here in verse 35 that if we don't remember these days of remembrance, then we're not going to think about the Feast of the Covenant. And it goes on to say we're actually going to walk according to the Feast of the Gentiles. So this is why you see so many of the children of Israel keeping the feast of the gentiles is because they've forgotten the days of remembrance forgetting the days of remembrance means you're going to walk according to the errors of the gentiles and according to their ignorance so this is why we're bringing this up and hopefully we'll do a lot of videos on this day of remembrance as we try to bring people's attention to it nobody wants to be in the kingdom of heaven alone so we need to make everybody aware of these feast days so we can all start to try to get back to walking according to the Feast of the Covenant and put all of that Gentile stuff down. So I'm hoping that you're saying the importance of these days of remembrance. There's a lot at stake here when it comes to obeying the Father's sacred calendar and remembering these days. The way I'm understanding this, and you can put your comment down in the comment section, what it's telling me is, is that if you don't remember, if we don't remember these days of remembrance, then we're going to forget all of these other elements of the sacred calendar. The feast days, the months, the years, the jubilees, the new moons, the Sabbath days, even the feast of the covenant will all be forgotten if we don't remember the days of remembrance. And we'll find ourselves talking and walking like Gentiles. So let's remember Jubilees chapter 6 and verse 23 and these days of remembrance. They fall on the new moon of the first sacred month and on the new moon of the fourth sacred month and on the new moon of the seventh sacred month and on the new moon of the tenth sacred month. So let's remember to keep these days and remember the questions we're asked for you guys to chime in on on the comment section 
What are we going to call these days and how are we going to celebrate them? Again, nobody remembers these days. We may be the only people thinking about these days at all which means that there's a lot of wiggle room as far as what we'll actually do on those days. I think the important thing is to actually remember them all together. And I know somebody's going to ask. So let me add that the new moon of the fourth month in the year 2021 will fall on or about the 10th or the 11th, the 10th or the 11th. I'm not really sure. Because from the moon data, it appears that the sliver of the new moon could actually appear on the 10th, but it could actually wait to come out on the 11th. That's why we're going to have to verify this for ourselves. But just as a ballpark, just as a roundabout, you know that this day of remembrance is going to be sometime around the 10th or the 11th, maybe even the 12th, depending on the sighting of the new moon. So be sure to be ready to search out and find the new moon this month so we can remember these days and with that i'm going to go ahead and close this video out if you got anything out of it hit the like button if you didn't hit the dislike button but leave us a comment either way and shalom